Hey, what's up, Abayan? And today I will show you the simplest and the best way to make a bootable Kali Linux USB drive and dual boot your Windows PC with Kali Linux. For this video, I'm gonna using the tool known as Ventoy, and I'm gonna download this Ventoy tool. This is probably the best tool to make a USB bootable drive because it never messes with your ISO image. I am I have been using Rufus and other softwares but those always mess with my ISO image and always mess up the installation of Kali Linux. But for this method, this is probably the best one because it does not interfere with your ISO image. So this is probably the best one that you should try. So I'm going to dual boot my Windows computer with my Kali Linux secondary OS because I do some ethical hacking on the site. So for this I'm going to download Ventoy and I'm gonna show you how you can download Kali Linux or any other Linux that you wanna use. For this I am gonna use the Kali Linux version because I'm making a video on dual booting videos with Kali Linux. So I'm gonna download the installer image, the offline version. Let's download this right here. I will provide the links in the description. I have already downloaded it so I will not download it again. But this is how you can download the image file. So let's extract the Ventoy tool. And now let's open it up. Here you can see Ventoy to disk. Run it as administrator. If you get any prompts, just say yes. Now I'm, there is no device detected, so I'm gonna plug in my USB device. Here we go. Now let's just refresh it so it picks up our USB. Here we go. We have the USB disk detected. Now let's install Ventoy on it. So it does, this is the best way. So let's do it again. I will highly recommend that you use Ventoy because Rufus always messes up your ISO image, unpacks it and repacks it. With. The installation just sucks. I'm telling you. Ventoy is the best tool to do everything. So let's do it. If you get any update on Ventoy, you can update Ventoy by simply downloading the latest version and then doing it again all over it. If you, you can come to this link and they will show you the latest version. So this is probably the latest one. I'm going to show you how to update it. Just simply download the latest version, extract it just like we did here. Open Ventoy to disk, run as administrator and if you get the, you will see the package and the update version and simply press update. This will never, never, ever delete your ISO image. It will simply update the package of Ventoy that is already installed in a different partition on your USB disk. So I'm gonna do this again. Here we go. Now as you can see it will never change your ISO images. So this is the best. Okay now how to transfer your Kali Linux. The simple method just simply copy paste. I'm gonna right click here and send to my Ventoy the USB disk. Let's wait for it to finish the copying process. It will never ever open your ISO images so the ISO files are safe and completely free of corruption. It will never corrupt and your files are safe. And also you can use your USB as a sto secondary storage device. So let's skip this method right now. No one can wait that hard. Okay, the copying process is almost complete and the copy is complete. Now let's make a different partition for Kali Linux to be installed on. Let's go to your PC and check the manage. Here you can see the disk management option. Open it up. Wait for it for making. Okay, I've already made a partition but I will also show you. This is my USB drive. This is the secondary partition where the Wintoy software is installed and it takes a little bit of space of your usb disk but the whole usb is there now let me or down delete this let's just extend the volume so i will show you how to do that again okay now if how to make the partition you just select the disk that you want to use i am using my d drive so let's shrink the volume 
and I'm gonna type the volume in MBs that I wanna use. I wanna donate 100 GB, so I will 10 This will be exactly 100 GBs as you can see. This is now unallocated. Now let's make a simple volume out of it so it is recognizable. Uh, use you can assign the letter that you want to use. I will be doing this one because AB no one uses AB right now. Let's do this. You can change your name and settings here but I will not recommend that you do that. Now it is formatting my secondary partition and now we have a, another new volume on my local disk. As now you can see here I have a new volume which is completely empty and this is the volume I will be using to make a Linux Kali Linux, to install my Kali Linux on there. As you can see in the winter there is nothing else. Now let's just shut down and boot into my USB image. Okay, now I'm gonna boot into my USB drive. You can change in settings in your BIOS, but I'm gonna do the boot menu and select the SMI USB disk. As you can see, I have installed two Linux versions, but I'm gonna use the Kali Linux right now because I am dual booting my Windows device with my Kali Linux version. So let's select graphical install. Select your Linux file that you have installed on your IS, uh, I mean, copy to your USB disk and then you're good to go. Vento is the best version. I highly recommend that you use Vento because this always works for me and Rufus always messages up. So let's select the language. I'm gonna go with English. And I'm gonna go with the default settings right now. You can change those settings later, but I recommend that you do not change settings later. Just do it right now, right here. So let's wait for it to detect and mount the installation media. Now I can use Wi-Fi and Ethernet, but I am using Ethernet as my primary network. Let's select the host name. I'm gonna go with Kali and domain name. I'm gonna be using my own name, I guess. Let's type my own name here. You can use whichever one you want. So this is gonna be the username. I'm gonna type in my username. This is gonna be my username and you can select your password. Well, I'm gonna type in my own name as my password, but I recommend you that you do a really, really strong password. Whichever one you want to use, just do this. Let's select the default settings right here. And now this is going to be setting up the partitioner. And then you will see the volume that you use. I will not recommend that you use the guided because I am dual booting. So I'm going to go with manual. You know, as you can see, here are all the, dis all the disks that are detected. So this is my USB, first one, this is my SSD, second one, oh, I mean the third one is my USB, the one, first one is my HDD drive and the second one is my SSD drive. So this is my hard disk, so I made 100 GB, so this is the one that I made, so let's continue here. So these are all the settings on this partition, you can change, delete, erase or do whatever you want, just I have changed the name. And mount for this partition, you do need to go to the select the root mount point as root. And I do not recommend that you change anything else. Just open this partition that you already made on your videos section and then select it as root and done setting it up. Now, as you can see, the, I have changed the name to Kali and select it as those. And I'm gonna select this finish and I'm gonna select no because I do not want to change anything else. I have already changed my settings. You can also go back and change whatever you want. So now I'm gonna write changes to disk. Select yes and continue. And now the partition is being formatted and the new partition, I, I'm sorry, 
the Kali Linux will be installed on that partition. Let's wait for it to finish the installation. Most of the people are having problems with installing Kali Linux so I will change these settings. This will eliminate the error. The first process was that you use Ventoy because it never messes with your ISO image. And this, this is the second part that will eliminate all the errors. Just simply unselect the, these options and simply select only the desktop environment XSXFCE and continue it will not install those tools that you will not be using but you can install those tools later simply just unselect these last two options and you are good to go you will not get any errors i hope Alright, so now for this part, the grub bootloader is very important. This bootloader helps you to choose between your Kali Linux or Windows operating system. If you are using dual boot, so this will always appear and you should always install it. Do not mess this one up. Let's wait for it to finish the installation and then we are good to go. And now as you can see the installation is complete now all we need to do is to remove our usb drive and then just simply continue i'm gonna remove my usb drive and then continue and the system will reboot and now we will see the this is cleaning up now and then we will see the you know uh the boot loader the grub boot loader let's Wait for it. Now as you can see this is the grub boot loader and here I have been given options to select Kali Linux and Windows Boot Manager. I'm going with Kali Linux right now. And then I will show you that you can also go into Windows. Let's wait for it to open. Well I also got some company with me. My friends are also watching how I'm doing this. And recording at the same time. And one is also dancing. Pretty cool. So this is probably the first time I am booting up Kali Linux as my secondary OS. That is why it is taking so much time. This will not take much time. All the now let's select the username that we set it up in the installation. I'm gonna type in my own name and then select in the password that you we already used. Oh, I'm sorry, I just forgot how I did that. I'm gonna type in my password and. My username was not in capitals, it was in lower cases only. Let me type it again and press login. Gonna gotta type the password again. Yep, now I have memorized my username and password. I hope you memorized yours as well. And now as you can see, Color Linux is booting and is completely running on my HD drive now let's let me show you what you can do here now the wallpaper has changed as well so now it is completely booted I guess yep the quieter you become the more you are able to hear love this motor man okay now let's open terminal here now let me show you how you can access your root 
super user access i'm gonna type in the commands first i'm gonna type in the command to update my to uh, my os to the latest version let's type in well it is permission denied because i am not a root user i'm mean super user right now so let's type in sudo su s u d o s u super user now let's type in my password that i set it up earlier and now i have been given root access now i can update my kali linux to the latest version that is available right now let's see apt get update this updates all the packages that are installed on your system and it's connected to the internet Okay, so I love my packages are to the latest version already. Now let's upgrade my operating system to the latest version. If you are gonna, we need to type in Y for yes and for no. I agreed. Now I have. Now it is downloading all the necessary stuff from the web and updating will continue as well. Well, I should not be updating right now because I need to show you guys how to boot back into your Windows system, operating system. So let's discontinue it and boot right back. I'm sorry, I just forgot to tell you how to discontinue that. Control and C are the key combination that will completely abort your operation. So this is how you abort the installation or any command that you are using. Let's close it. I'm gonna just restart my computer. Okay, so after restarting, you will be greeted by the grub bootloader. Now let's change it up. And now here you can see the Windows Boot Manager. Select it. And then you are gonna boot into your Windows operating system. It never messes with your other operating system like Kali Linux that I have already installed, but this is great option. These two operating system never mix around, so this is probably the best way to use Kali Linux on the go. You can bring your laptop wherever you want. Now let's start Windows normally. Now here you can see the Kali Linux partition is gone, not showing up anywhere because it is completely hidden from your Windows operating system. So you can use your Windows normally and also you can use your Kali Linux or any other Linux operating system that you want to use. Now let me plug in my USB and show you how this works. And now as you can see I am using my USB for two operating systems i am using kali linux linux mint and also i was using it to as a storage device but i don't want to use that anymore so this is now a simple usb and also a bootable one if you want to use it as bootable simply copy your iso image to this drive and if you want to use it as a normal usb simply copy your files here so that's been it thanks for watching i will catch you in the next one take care i hope this helps bye